Lamar tells all his incoming neighbors. The same thing that is, that $9,000 is a small price for a great EDU. Cation. Why, of course, Lamar loves the school. It was a real bargain. For him to send his children there, since Mary's mother paid 100% of the tuition. Later, the sales executive and his wife did some research on the local public school system. They found that it was far better academically than Lamar had told them. They decided that all their children would attend public schools. They were pleased with the quality education provided there. What is the value you place on a private school education, luxury automobiles, foreign travel, and a lovely home? How sensitive are you to the prices of these products and services? Lamar is quite insensitive to high prices. The sales executive is just the opposite. Lamar finds it much easier to spend other people's money than his own. The sales executive, on the other hand, never received any economic outpatient care except for some of his undergraduate college tuition. The sales executive is fully self-sustaining today. Why? Because he and his family do not receive economic outpatient care marked for consumption. He spends much of his time enhancing his productivity by working harder and investing wisely. Conversely, Lamar and Mary spend much of their time anticipating the receipt of stronger doses of economic outpatient care. The question OF question. You may ask, will I spoil my adult children if I give them cash? Gifts? All the effects of cash gifts on the adult children of the AFLU and cannot possibly be presented in one chapter. And it is important to note that those who receive such gifts are not the jobless dropouts so often reported in the press. They are, in fact, likely to be well-educated and to hold well-respected occupational positions. The top 10 occupations of the adult children of the affluent are as follows. 1. Corporate executive. 2. Entrepreneur. 3. Middle manager. 4. Physician. 5. Advertising marketing slash. 6. Attorney. 7. Engineer, architect, high scientist. Eight, accountant. Nine, college, university professor. Ten, high school, elementary. Sales professional, school teacher. Nevertheless, it cannot be denied that adult children who receive cash gifts differ from those who do not. Let's contrast the wealth and income characteristics of adult children who do receive gifts with those who do not because age is highly correlated with both wealth and annual household income, it is important to attempt to hold age constant when making comparisons between gift receivers and non-receivers. It is also useful to examine the differences in these two groups within each of 10 occupational classifications since different occupational groups tend to generate different levels of income and net worth. Let's look at a survey of gift receivers and non-receivers from all economic backgrounds in their early 40s to mid-50s. For example, households headed by accountants who receive cash gifts from their parents have 57% of the net worth of those in the some occupational category who do not receive gifts. For example, households headed by accountants who receive cash gifts from their parents have 78% of the annual house. Hold income of those in the same occupational category who do not receive gifts. Note that in eight of the 10 occupational categories, gift receivers have smaller levels of net worth, wealth, than those who do not receive gifts. For example, on average, accountants who are approximately 50 years of age and receive cash gifts from their parents have only 57% of the net worth of accountants in the same age group who do not receive gifts. Further, accountants who receive gifts generate only 78% of the annual income of accountants who don't receive gifts. Note that cash gifts were not included in computing the annual incomes of accountants who receive gifts. When these tax-free dollar gifts are added to the incomes of gift receivers, then, on average, gift receivers have approximately 98% of the average annual income of non-receivers. In spite of this, they still only have 57% of the net worth of accountants who do not receive gifts. 
Accountants who receive gifts are not the only occupational group that has lower income and net worth characteristics. As you can see in Table 5, 2, gift receivers in seven other occupational categories also have lower levels of net worth than non-receivers, including attorneys. 62% Advertising slash marketing slash sales professionals, 63% Entrepreneurs, 64%. Senior managers slash executives, 65%. Engineers slash architects slash scientists, 76%. Physicians, 88%. And middle managers, 91%. Gift receivers in only two of the 10 occupational groups have higher levels of wealth than non-receivers. In spite of having lower Incomes than non-receivers, gift receivers who are high school slash ELE. Mentory school teachers have higher net worths than non-receivers. Teachers who receive gifts have 185% of the net worth of the average for non-receivers, but only 92% of the income. Call. Legend University professors who receive gifts have 128% of the net worth and 88% of the income of non-receivers. Affluent. Parents can learn a great deal from gift receivers who are teachers and professors. Teachers and professors who receive cash gifts have a much higher propensity to accumulate wealth than do gift receivers. In the other eight occupational classifications, how can one explain this peculiarity? To do so, it is important first to explain why most. Gift receivers in general have a lower propensity to accumulate wealth than do non-receivers. 1. Giving precipitates more consumption than saving and investing. For example, affluent parents often subsidize their children's purchase of a home. The intent may be to help their children get started on the right foot. The parents assume that such gifts are a once-in-a-lifetime phenomenon. Some have told us that they thought this would be the last dollar the kids would ever need. They assume that the recipients of their kindness will be able to do it on their own in the near future. Nearly half the time, they are wrong. Gift receivers frequently are underachievers in generating income. All too often, the income of the gift receiver does not increase at the same rate as his consumption. Remember, expensive homes are typey. Cali located in what we call high-consumption neighborhoods. Living in such neighborhoods requires more than just being able to pay the mortgage. To fit in, one needs to look the part in terms of one's clothing, landscaping, home maintenance, automobiles, furnishings, and so on. And don't forget to add high property taxes to all the other items. Thus, a gift of a down payment, whether full or partial, can place a recipient on a treadmill of consumption and continued dependence on the gift giver. But the majority of these recipients' neighbors, more likely than not, receive no cash gifts from their parents. They are much more content and confident about their lifestyle than most gift receivers are. Many gift receivers in such situations become sensitive to the need for continued economic outpatient care. Their orientation may even dramatically change from a focus on self-generated eco, nomic achievement to one of hoping for and contemplating the arrival of additional gifts. Underachieving income producers in such cases find it nearly impossible to accumulate wealth. Gifts of down payments are not the only type that precipitate more. Consumption. Take, for example, the affluent parents who gave their Son Bill and daughter-in-law Helen a $9,000 rug that we were told contained millions of hand-tied knots. Bill is a civil engineer who works for the state. He earns less than $55,000 a year. His parents feel compelled to help him maintain a lifestyle and level of dignity Tsongru. And with someone with a graduate degree from a prestigious university, of course, the expensive rug looked out of place in a room filled with hand-me-down furniture and inexpensive light fixtures. So Bill and Helen felt compelled to purchase expensive walnut dining room fernie. Tour, 
a crystal chandelier, a solid silver service, and expensive lamps. Thus, the gift of the $9,000 rug precipitated the consumption of Nier. Al, why that same amount for other affluent artifacts? Sometime later, Bill mentioned to his mother that the local public schools were not as good as they were when he was an elementary school student. His mother countered that she would pay for part of her grandson's and granddaughter's private school tuition. Of course, it was up to Bill and Helen to decide if they should take their children. Out of the public school system, mother paid two-thirds of the tuition. Bill and Helen, the rest. In this case, a gift of $12,000 ended up cost. ING Bill and Helen $6,000 a year. Moreover, Bill and Helen did not contemplate the additional expenses of sending their children to private school. For example, they are often asked to make contributions to the school beyond the cost of tuition. They also felt they needed to buy a seven-passenger station wagon so they could participate in the school's carpool. Books and related fees are also costly, and their children are now exposed to other children and parents who tend to have higher con. Sumption lifestyles than were the case in the public school environment. Meant. In fact, their children are looking forward to traveling to Europe this summer. It's part of their education and socialization. Process. Gift receivers are significantly more likely than non-gift. Receivers to send their children to private schools. Although there are more children of non-gift receivers in private school overall, it is because the population of non-gift receivers is much larger than its counterpart. Two, gift receivers in general never fully distinguish between their wealth and the wealth of their gift-giving parents. Perhaps Tony Montage, a professional asset manager, said it best. Gift receivers, the adult children of the affluent feel that their parents' wealth of capital is their income, income to be spent. One of the main reasons gift receivers typically think of themselves as being financially well-off is because they receive parental subsidies. And people who think they are financially well-off tend to spend. In fact, statistically, they are just as likely to view themselves as being affluent as are truly affluent non-gift receivers. This is the case in spite of earning 91% of the income and having 81% of the wealth of non-receivers. Look at the situation from a gift receiver's side of the equation. Durr. ING each year of his adult life, William receives an annual tax-free gift of $10,000 from his parents. William is 48 years of age. $10,000 of tax-free income could be viewed as the product of what amount of capital? Assume an 8% return. This would equate to $125,000 in capital. Add this amount to his actual net worth. What is the result? William perceives himself as having $125,000 more in capital than he does. Consider this analogy. Have you ever been confronted by an eight-year-old youngster standing in the front yard of his parents' home? If you, a stranger, attempt to walk onto the property, Billy or Janie will likely say, you can't come into my yard. This is my property. Billy and Janie think that it is their property. At the age of eight, they may be correct. After all, they are children living at home. At this age, kids feel that the yard, the home, and the car are family property. But as the majority of Phyllis and Janie's mature, they become properly socialized by their parents. They grow into independent adults, adults who can easily distinguish between what is theirs and what is not. Their parents teach them independence. Unfortunately, a growing portion of adult children are not being taught the value of being emotionally and economically independent of their parents. How did one set of parents recently test to see if their adult son was independent? They used the montage effect as a basis for the test. After Thanksgiving dinner at his parents' home, James and his par ends had a conversation. His parents told James that they had decided to give several pieces of 
their commercial property to the local PRI, Vate College. His father told his son, I know you will understand that. The college really will benefit from such a gift. James's response, if written as a headline, might read, Son of affluent couple screams, that's my property, too, and the college people can't come in to my yard.